I am Armine Hakopian. I'm originally from Yerevan, Armenia. I grew up there. And after marrying Glenn, we moved to Thailand, where we spent six years. And then we moved to Australia, leaving Glenn actually behind in Thailand <laughs> for four years. But now we finally united here in Australia. Barodes, my name is uh, Len, Emma Nuna Len Vixa. Uh, although I'm uh, Arthur Samansi, I, I feel uh, a little bit Armenian, as I think is quite common when one marries an Armenian. Yeah, we call Armenian by choice, as you see. Right, you see. <laughs> Hence the reason why we're wearing the, the Taras, but uh, more about that later. Uh, my background is in aviation. And I've spent the last uh, uh, decade working for the UN uh, and now uh, hoping to spend uh, perhaps the next decade in Armenia. Let's see. Len, I might ask you this question. Why do you have uh, such a passion for Armenia? Well, the reason I ask this question is because uh, of the projects that you're uh, undertaking in the RNE uh, region. I'm sure our viewers would be interested to know exactly why you have this passion. Thank you uh, very much. It's a very pertinent question. Sometimes my family and friends ask the same question. Uh, and it's not just because of my, my wife and her family that motivates me. It's, uh, that's obviously part of it. But it's really about uh, injustice. If I could put one word on it. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of things in my life and uh, I would say that uh, when I understood the Armenian story, uh, the, I mean, there's a lot of very positive and beautiful things about the Armenian history, uh, but just to dwell on some of the negative for a minute, the injustice that the, uh, that the Armenian people have suffered, not just with genocide, uh, and uh, unfortunately being in that part of the world with uh, its neighbours and, and even its friends can sometimes be a little bit tricky, uh, I feel that Armenia needs a, a lot of support uh, and uh, some fresh ideas. Uh, and the, the last uh, reason I would say is is due to the uh, you know visits we've had around the villages. We've seen the, the the beautiful light, the bright light in the in the children's eyes. We've seen the most remarkable young men and women. Uh, that are growing up there in Armenia and I felt that we had to do something to give them an opportunity because they honestly think differently from the from the past uh, generations. Also I would mention that we saw how depopulated Armenian villages were many of them even not having anyone and which is a security threat for country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so whatever we do for the villages, it helps to populate it and bring people back to the villages. I, I think it's, it's about uh, recognizing the, the, the positive strengths of Armenia, but at the same time, trying to bring some fresh ideas in terms of uh, you know, looking forward in, in, into a positive future, rather than always looking back and being divided politically and, and very destructive things that some, some people engage in. You know, when I compared countries that I came from, uh, New Zealand, Australia, and with a Swiss background, and I looked at Armenia with um, pollution in the villages, you know, old cars everywhere, beautiful landscapes, but nobody had developed anything terribly much. Uh, it, it was, it's, and the opportunities, the positive opportunities are there for Armenia to uh, reach an incredible, uh, not just economic, but social place in that part of the world, which is extremely rare. So just building on the, the positives that are already there. What can you tell our viewers about your projects in r &E and maybe even the Adopt a Village uh, program? Thank also? you. I'll, I'll keep it as brief as possible because of course people can check out the website. You just uh, Google Adopt a Village uh, um, and you'll find it. Uh, essentially what I wanted to do was focus on the rural area. I'm sorry, but I see too much uh, focus on Yerevan, which is a very beautiful city, but Yerevan, frankly speaking, doesn't need any more parks or statues or anything. And by the way, there are no statues of females that I could find. So that's one of our projects, uh, empowering rural Armenian women, getting a woman on the, the DRAM banknote for a start, you know, to recognize their contribution. 
uh, but I di digress. The, the main focus is to ensure that every one of the 800 or so villages in Armenia and perhaps Artsakh uh, uh, have a mentor, uh, mm -hmm. have people that work directly with them to strengthen. Now, it may not be monetary projects. It might be just uh, importing skills, for example. Uh, there are many things, and it's really about building trust without a middle person in the, you know, which, as you know, there's, there's a concern about corruption and, and money going places that sh shouldn't and so on. So it's about building that trust. We're, we're very grateful that we have now projects going uh, in uh, Shirak region and Ararat region and uh, where we are based in Payatso. Uh, hopefully when we get there, that'll expand to all the provinces, but we want all the villages to be a mentor, no one to be left behind. It's about uh, also ensuring that the morale is high. That's very, very important morale so that everyone understands there is there is hope out there, positive hope. And last but not least, it's, uh, it's a bit of an evil plan, I would say, to get that personal connection between uh, not just diaspora, but friends of diaspora like me and Armenian people in the rural areas mm -hmm. and to in, encourage them to actually move to Armenia, not just to Yerevan, but to the rural area like we're doing. So that's my, my plan. I, I figured that a small percentage will do so and will make a huge difference to the rural area. Yeah. Um, that's uh, Adopt a Village from in a general sense. We have uh, many other different projects, as I said, but uh, I, I won't bore you with those right now. You can look at those on the, on the website. However, the Open Air Cultural Museum is pr probably the most exciting. And uh, particularly at the moment where we have uh, a neighbor uh, that's destroying whatever it can of Armenian culture. Uh, in my view, uh, this is this genocidal action is, is all part of uh, the bigger picture to eradicate Armenians from the area uh, as indigenous people. Uh, so uh, we felt it crucial right now to um, highlight to people the rich culture and, and history of Armenia um, and uh, in a, in a, to be able to put in one place all the different uh, cultural aspects or at least the main ones uh, so people could immerse themselves in that experience, have, a, have that experience where they could smell the, the, the lavash, they could hear the the uh, zerna, they could they could see, see the uh, you know, the um, uh, stone worker, you know, they, all the different cultures you can imagine. We're just walking around what what is kind of a a, a recreation of a century old village, although of course it's 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 done in a beautiful way, you know, a century old village. So we're hoping that that will and that will be run by the municipality, not by us. So so, so uh, it's an opportunity for them to. Uh, ensure that uh, crafts and arts uh, are not lost, which is what's happening. As my wife mentioned, you know, people are leaving villages and uh, arts have been lost. So we have an opportunity there to be very, very proud. Uh, you know, Armenia needs to be very, very proud of who it, who it is as a, as a nation and uh, a people, the, the history. So this museum will hopefully attract more tourists, not just to Arani, but to other places. Uh, also, you're a very humble man because you didn't uh, dwell on the beautiful project of the Arani Lodge. You put that kind of uh, to the background, but it is a beautiful project. Uh, and as I said in the, in, uh, the video, which people will be watching, uh, you didn't this. You didn't uh, commence this to become a rich man. It's not some uh, rich Australian guy and his wife come to make themselves richer. It's to actually enrich uh, the country of Armenia. And it, the Arani Lodge will also be used as a as a training centre, yes. if I'm not mistaken, for yes. uh, for young people who, or even older people who want to uh, learn about the hospitality industry. Lynn? Yes. And can I add also RNA Lodge will be used as a, a part of Green Lane Training Center. Mm. We are partnering with Green Lane NGO and with them we would be doing some trainings for the locals who want to learn diversification of crops or new ways, organic ways of cropping them. And uh, 
uh, thank you both for, for and, and God bless you for, for all of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Finally, if I may ask you, um, perhaps I can ask this to Armine. Mm -hmm. Armine, what advice would you give to the Armenian diaspora and even um, foreign nationals who want to consider moving to Armenia or investing in the country? So to my fellow Armenians, uh, I will ask them that they keep connection with our home country because our home country can't survive without them in today's reality. Yeah. And we all need to do something small or big. It doesn't matter because every bit helps. Like, uh, for example, we were talking about our new open air cultural museum. We are inputting 35% of whole project ourselves, but we can't build it uh, alone. So we need everyone to be united for this project. So if anyone wants to help us in this, they can just go to GoFundMe page, which you can provide them later, I think. Yeah. And uh, so we can build together. And as with this project, with the other things too, please let all of us be united. It doesn't matter what political background we have, what views we have on things in life and all that. It doesn't matter. The only matter is here, our homeland. Many Armenians think that they're alone. Uh, I'm here to tell you that you're not. Uh, Peter is there as a very visible symbol to say, you have many friends, many friends in Armenia. Uh, but uh, what we've found is that uh, actually it's mostly or 90% uh, non-Armenians that are that are donating right now and of course everybody is affected by the pandemic universally around the world so it can't be about that it's uh, we found that uh, that many uh, Armenians are, are, are giving yes but uh, you know if they're to wake up one day and to find out that the their beautiful homeland is still surviving then then they must do what they that they can 90 percent to 10 percent is not a good ratio my fellow armenians also support the foreigners who are supporting armenia <laughs> because i don't want them to feel lonely when they are doing something for our country yeah and please communicate <laughs> uh we've been talking about this at work recently about uh creating this uh, community whereby uh, foreign nationals who come to live in Armenia won't feel alone. And it, it is a daunting task to uh, uproot and come to a completely different country. I, I know that personally. Yeah. Uh, I've had an Armen I've, a wife by my side. Uh, some of these people don't have that connection. Yes. Uh, and so I think building a community uh, is very, very important. I hope that the lodge ends up being as a meeting place as well for, for the likes of yourself and myself, because we will put out some flags, the Australian and New Zealand flags, with the Armenian flag in the ascended position, of course. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm really hoping that it'll it'll be a nice meeting place for different artists and artsy to, to relax and enjoy and to feel welcome. And we would encourage everyone who watches this video to uh, not only maybe consider contributing themselves, but also uh, maybe contact uh, their friends on Facebook or whatever other social media. Spread the, spread the word that uh, there are people coming to Armenia, such as yourselves, who've already started uh, projects, who've got this vision for Armenia's future and who are not just talking about it, but doing something. Please uh, support these uh, projects, spread the word, and um, we once again thank you both for uh, taking the time to share your thoughts with us. Thank you too for this opportunity.